Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a blog hop project that I did for Stencil Girl Creative Team. Now this is obviously a video, but if you'd like to go and do the blog hop, the link to my blog will be below the video and you can click on that and then you can go and you can hop through all the blog posts. Some of them will have videos, some of them will not, all from the Stencil Girl Creative Team and the idea is that everyone had a different color and it's a monochromatic project that will then hop through the rainbow. So you've got, somebody's got red, somebody's got yellow, somebody's got orange. I have violet and I did it with my partner Peg because we do Stencil Girl together. So we agreed amongst each other that we would each make a, a background piece, uh, a piece of some sort. One would be light, one would be dark, and they would be violet. So I am starting my pieces, which I will then scan and send to Peg, and then she scanned hers and sent them to me. I started mine with collage because I like to collage, and I found different pieces of paper in my stash. Some of it's scrapbook paper, some of it's printed paper, some of it's uh, tissue paper, just different types of papers. Um, that were just randomly in my stuff that I consider to be violet. Now that's the only color that I can use. I can use violet. I can use tenths of violet, which means um, adding various variations of white to make a tint, or I can use shades of violet, which would be adding black to violet to make shades of violet. And then I can use black and white as well. And that's it. There's no other colors in this at all. It's called monochromatic because you're just using one color. So I'm just using pieces that are, are shades and tints of violet that are papers that I'm sticking down on uh, two pieces of watercolor paper. This is actually one piece cut in half of 140 pound uh, watercolor paper that's cold pressed and I'm using Liquitex matte gel medium to stick my papers down. And, and we'd agreed between us Peg and I that we would do one light and one dark. So I'm just continuing to stick these down and I'll be done in a second and then we'll move on to the stenciling part which is you know what Stencil Girl is about. Stencil Girl company has fantastic stencils for making marks in your mixed media. They've got all kinds of artists who are designing for them and making really fascinating stencils. So I recommend the company. Um, there, I just showed you, I'm the color I'm using is Liquitex Basics Prism Violet Acrylic Paint. Plus, I also have Liquitex Basics Titanium White Acrylic Paint, and that's the only paint I'm going to use. So I'm just kind of mixing the white and the violet together to make a lighter uh, tint of, violet, of the Prism Violet. And I'm starting out with the stencil it's called monoprint that's the name of it <laughs> i guess uh, the person who designed this one and i can't write out of my the top of my head remember who designed it um thought it would be good for monoprinting and it's basically it has it has a stencil and then it has a mask so the stencil is the part where you have the background and then a hole cut in it and you stencil through the hole that's a stencil if you take out the part that was inside and you use it to stencil with, then that is a mask, and that's what I'm using right now. So it's the combination of stencils and masks in one uh, large stencil. You do have to trim them out, but they're just connected by these little teeny tiny connectors of plastic, and you just snip, 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 and you can get the mask out of it. The second stencil that I'm using is from Stencil Club. Stencil Club is so fun. I've been, I belong to it now for probably, I don't know, a couple years maybe. And it's $25 a month, or I think it's 30 if you're in Europe. And that includes shipping and everything. You get three stencils that are unique to Stencil Club. You get a, a 9 by 12, a 6 by 6, and a 4 by 4 stencil every month. And you don't know what you're going to get. It's just a surprise when it comes. Well, you find out in the group what you're going to get before it arrives. So if you really didn't like that when you could cancel before, before the stencil came. Also, when you belong to the group, you can... Uh, order stencils from the past. So, you, so like this one is from, I think, uh, this one is Rex Ray, inspired by Rex Ray from 2013, also a club stencil. 
I wasn't in the, in the club in 2013, but I was able to order this um, exclusive stencil and get it, you know, at when I was in the club because I was in the club. Also, there is a Facebook group, and in the Facebook group, everybody's participating. There's all kinds of of uh, party calls and swaps and different things. And then also every month when the stencils come out. Mary Beth Shaw does a live stream where she shows what she likes about the stencils. And then also the artist who created the stencils makes a video. So you get a video from them as well. So um, the colors I'm using, I'm using some pure white because that's just a neutral. And then I also used the uh, mixed color. And then I'm using the prism violet straight as well. And just adding these fun little uh lines. I'm going to use this stencil again when I do my actual project. It's it's called, the, the set is called Stay in Your Magic, and I'm not sure why it's called that, but it has these interesting little little line border type things, um, interesting shapes. So I'm just continuing to stencil over the top of my collage to make an interesting background, and then I think I will even probably come in at some point and use a pen to finish up um, making some marks myself with a Posca pin. I think I did that. Yeah, am I done? Am I done? Let's see. <laughs> I'm trying to decide. <laughs> uh, I did some splatters with the white Posca pin. And then I took the pin and I started making some doodle marks, like circling around the dots that I stenciled on and uh, drawing around things and uh, making little squiggles and stuff. So that is how I finished my light violet piece was to do doodling on, on the top. Because that's fun and it makes it feel more complete. So then I'm going to scan this. Um, with my scanner and I will I will email it to Peg a, along with the dark one and then she will be emailing, emailing me a light and a dark stenciled background so that we'll end up with four pieces after we print them out we'll end up with four pieces to complete our project so this is just the first step and this happened long 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 time before the second step <laughs> here I'm just taking a very small paintbrush and picking up some of that um, paint and painting around a few of the shapes because I didn't have a violet colored Posca pen, you know, that was the same color um, or any type of pen. So I used a paintbrush. You can always use a paintbrush. You don't have to use a pen. It's just so easy to use pens when, when they're so precise in application. So there's the light, light violet uh, background that I made for Peg and now we're going to work on the darker one. This one has darker paper glued to it and I'm going to start stenciling over the top again using this stencil club inspired by Rex Ray large stencil. I like the dots on there. It has dots so I tend to use that a little bit. Um, filling in some of the areas on the background are left white because I didn't put any paper over them so I'm filling in with the shapes and the very dark, the darkest form of the violet paint. Because I want to keep this one dark. I don't want to um, lighten it up too much because that's the point. And then this stencil is called uh, Tropical Floral, Floral Tropical, Tropical Floral Stencil, yeah. This one is designed by Tracy Bautista. It's a really cool stencil. And um, I'll have all the stencils listed below the video at the end, as well as whatever products I used so that if you wanted to try to duplicate a project like this, you could. And um, if you go over to stencilgirlproducts.com and you look at all the stencils, you'll be so overwhelmed. You'll just want them all. <laughs> Every time I go there, it's like, I, okay, can you just send me them all? <laughs> Every single one? That would be way, way, way too much. But yeah, there's a ton of really great stencils there. They do ship to other countries, not just the United States. So um, I'm putting some flowers on this one. Uh, there's a, a place that looks like a mask within this stencil and then a place that, that's a, 
that are flower stencils as well. There's a lot of action going on, d dots and dashes and splats and all kinds of shapes going on in, inside this stencil, which is pretty cool. And then I'm coming back with the the one that's called Stay in Your Magic and putting on some of that one. And I think I just filled in some of the areas with the paint uh, where it was just too white. I used some of the that mid-tone blend paint and my my sponge pouncer to just fill it in, fill it in a little bit, make it darker. And then I came in with my Posca pen again and maybe a little bit of water brush to blend to add some more pattern to my background. Do some doodling and tracing and drawing around things and uh, making it more interesting, making certain features of the background stand out. Pretty fun stuff. Just kind of pointing out the different shapes with my white Posca pen. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells. And of course, you can share this on Pinterest or um, anything like that that you want to do. So there's my dark background. Scanned them, sent them to Peg, and now I'm going to start my actual project. <laughs> so the first thing I did is I found, well, I found a recycled um, art board. It's, it's probably a half inch thick uh, MDF type board and it had some art on it that I didn't like. So I, I gessoed it. I tore off some of it and then I gessoed it and I'm planning on collaging over the top because, you know, it's, it's kind of jacked up, a little bit messed up. <laughs> but once I collage over the top of it, no one will ever know there was ever anything under there. Um, these scanned backgrounds were printed on regular paper on a laser printer. So I don't need to worry about sealing in the ink or anything. They're not going to smear or run because it was a laser printer. If you did print out your backgrounds, your digital copies of the backgrounds, you would need, out with an inkjet printer, you would need to seal them by using a, like something like a brayer and just doing a light coat of fluid matte medium or clear gesso over the top just to to seal in the inks but in this case they were laser printed so I didn't need to worry about that. I took a ruler and I, I tore them into rectangles and strips and squares and I'm just gonna um, collage them onto this this artboard just in an interesting way. I'm not I'm, I'm not really focusing on anything here. I'm mostly just filling in the background and making it interesting, put, putting light ones against darker ones. Um, the ones that Peg gave me, her color of violet paint that, paint that she used was a lot more red than mine. Mine was bluer. Um, you know, colors, colors are what the paint people make them. I mean, <laughs> there's even if you buy, like for instance, I have a Naples yellow from one, one company and a Naples yellow from another company and they're not the same color. They're both a nice warm yellow in kind of a, a light tint, but they're not the same color. So hers was more of a red violet and more, mine was more of a blue violet. You can uh, go watch her video or look at her blog post as well and see exactly how she made her backgrounds. I will try to remember to, to link her video in the description box below my video so that you can watch and see how she made her backgrounds that she sent to me. So I'm making sure that I collage around the edge of the artboard as well so that this can just be hung on the wall without putting it in a frame. It's pretty heavy. If you put it in a frame as well, it would be even heavier. So I just wanted to, to cover the edges with the papers as I was going. And it's it's all pretty grid like. I could I could accent that if I wanted to, but I decided instead to just use it as a background and not um, really focus on what I was doing as much. It looks really cool though. 
it's kind of cool just like that, <laughs> but that's not enough for me. I've got to go and change it and <laughs> make it, make it something else. So I thought about the stencils that I had used and I just, I was thinking about that one that's called uh, Stay in Your Magic. That's the, the large one from that, that three stencil set. And those look like borders, right? But I thought maybe they could be stems instead. So I can use a neutral color like black or white. So I got out the black paint. This is a carbon black Liquitex basic, Basics acrylic paint. And I'm stenciling on stems for flowers. That's my intention. And then also this one that's like a squiggle. Uh, there's no way that one could ever be a border. I don't know. But <laughs> um, it's an interesting squiggly shape. And so I decided that it looked kind of like leaves or something because it has it's narrow gets fatter and then goes narrow again like a leaf so I stenciled all those on with black and then I'm taking a black Posca pen and on the ends of the stems I'm drawing flowers because it is spring and flowers are on everybody's mind and besides who doesn't like flowers I mean we always like flowers and I'm just making them whimsical shapes. I, I couldn't tell you, okay, this is that flower and that is this flower. One flower I did save from the background, which is left over from the stenciling um, from the tropical floral stencil. I saved that flower and added that stem to it. And then once I am done drawing the flowers with my Posca pen and that is an acrylic paint pen so it's permanent it'll stay on there I don't have to worry about it I got out the violet paint again and some some titanium white paint and then also some glazing medium which is a paint without uh, pigment in it so it's just like a clear glazing medium and mix those together to make a thin uh, violet tint paint and I'm going to paint around everything and just kind of push back the background because it's all pretty busy. I don't want to obliterate it. I like having all that interest in the background, but I don't need it to be standing out so much. So I want to bring the flowers and the stems to the forward and I want to push back that background. So I'm just using a water tank brush which keeps everything very fluid and going around uh, all the flowers and stems and thingy-mabobbers, leave thingy-mabobbers <laughs> and just um, bringing the, those things forward. I like to do this as one of my favorite techniques and I'll do it a lot and then not do it for a long time and just kind of forget about it and then do it a lot again. And then I'm going in and I'm uh, adding highlight and shadow within the flowers to make them more interesting, not painting them in, you know, not making a solid paint in, but making highlights and shadows within them to um, make them more dimensional. So I, I got out some more white paint. I've got that lavendery mix paint, and then I have the dark purple, the original color, which is the prism violet from Legotex Basics. Then, of course, I smushed up some of the black where I had stenciled. Also, I want to make, when you're making an illustration, you want to make the line weight varied, some fatter and some thinner, and it makes it more interesting. So I'm going back in with this India ink pen. It's called a Pentel pocket brush. It's like it got a little brush tip on it, like a paintbrush. And it allows me to easily draw a very thin line or a very thick line or somewhere in between by a, by using pressure, making it, you know, pushing down harder or, or lightening it up. So I'm going over my lines because when I, when I drew with the Posca pen, it's just one, it's one line weight. That's it. You're not going to get fatter and thinner unless you go back over and draw and color in. So this is a lot easier, darkening everything up and making the line weight um, more varied to make it more interesting. The last thing that I did was to add a few more highlights by using some of the 
acrylic paint inside of the, the white Posca pen to uh, really do intense highlights. It's very opaque and it really will cover anything. So I made intense highlights and uh, a few splatters and then I was done with this project. I hope you've enjoyed it. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.